Okay, CC students, let's talk about closing arguments. Uh, we've gotten some requests uh, for videos about closing arguments, so I, I wanted to uh, get that out to you. Uh, we're still working on the, the videos about um, objections and uh, entering exhibits, but let's, let's do our video on closing arguments. We're going to do this in two parts. First is going to be an overview, uh, a general overview about closing arguments, and then the second video will be how the CC mock trial packet talks about how to formulate your closing arguments. So let's talk about what, what is closing arguments. Well, the difference, there's a big difference between your opening statement and your closing argument. And, and the difference really is evident in the terminology that's used uh, when we talk about these. You have an opening statement, which is an overview or a statement, and closing argument is an argument. And some things that happen in closing argument that can't happen in, in your opening statement. And your opening statement, as you'll recall, um, you're limited to talk about what uh, will the facts show. You can't make inferences based on the evidence in your opening statement. This is your overview about what the testimony is going to be and what you believe the facts will show. But you can't make inferences based on that evidence. So you can't say, um, you know, that this evidence is going, um, you should infer based on this evidence that somebody's lying or truthful. Uh, the, the, you wouldn't get into that in your opening statement. Now, you, you will say in your opening statement that the evidence is going to show that the defendant's guilty or not guilty. Um, that's part of the outline of what you anticipate your case is going to be back, about. But in your closing argument, you get to do different things. And one of the most important things is you're going to draw conclusions. Um, and you're going to draw conclusions based on the evidence that's been presented. Uh, and also, you're going to talk about the other sides other other side of the case, the other attorneys, whether you're on the prosecution or defense, you're going to talk about their factual theories, and you're going to draw conclusions supporting your factual theory and draw conclusions that disprove their factual theory. And we'll get into that, and we'll talk about what that's about. You're going to make inferences. Remember I said in your opening statement, you can't make inferences about the evidence or the testimony. But in this, you will. You will make inferences. And, and a lot of the inferences that you can make have to do with the credibility of witnesses or the weight of the evidence or whether or not this makes sense to you as a juror. So you're beginning to make inferences about things that are occurring and using logic. So if something is true, then something else can't be true. One, one effective closing argument that I like to use, and now we're going to talk about it, so... Nobody will be able to use it. I tell, I tell my class that um, that they can't use this. But an inference that you can make, and this is based, this is pretty cool because this is based on logic, is that if um, you have two uh, different stories of the events, so if one side says it's raining outside and the other side says it's not raining outside, the inference is if you believe that it's raining outside, then therefore you can't believe that it's not raining outside. However, if you believe that it's not raining outside, you can't believe that it is raining outside. So how does that work for a trial? Well, pretty simple. If you believe this person's story of the events, then you can't believe the other person's story of the events because they're so different. So you're going to make inferences about uh, testimony and um, other inferences that you're going to make is you're going to explain the relevance of a testimony or an exhibit. This is a little bit difficult because the way we do mock trials, we break up different roles. Like I've told you before, is I try a case uh, the whole way from the beginning, from opening statement, direct examination, cross-examination, entering exhibits, to closing argument, all by myself. So there's not a team of lawyers. So it's easy for me to get up and I would talk about the, ele the relevance of certain questions that I ask. You know, for an example, I would say, Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, do you remember when I asked the witness about this? And hopefully you get a couple people in the jury be like, yes. And he said, the reason I asked that question was because of this. So I'm going to explain the relevance of the testimony or the exhibit. Now, I could take for granted that they understood the reason why I was asking that question. But there might be somebody there who doesn't really realize the relevance or understand why I'm asking this question. And you take it a step further. You say, do you remember why I asked that question? you remember when I asked that question? Here's why I asked it. And to go further, do you remember what their answer was? Here was their answer. So now I'm bringing that all back. 
So I'm going to explain the relevance of, relevance of my questions, of the testimony and the exhibits, and why it's relevant to the outcome of the case. I'm going to make analogies or tell stories. If you can tell a story in your closing argument that is more entertaining than just going through this, um, the evidence that's been pre presented, it'll be a more effective closing argument. It'll be more fun for you as the student, but it'll also be more enjoyable for your parents that are watching, for your classmates, and for the people that are acting as jurors. This one people get nervous about because they don't feel like they can do it, but you should do it. You should comment on the credibility or, or, or motives of a witness. Um, Got to be careful here because I don't want to be coaching. Um, if, 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 uh, if somebody testifies in a case, um, let's, uh, let's talk about it in a, in a civil case where, um, remember we talked about criminal and civil case, so let's talk about a civil case where the um, person testifying has a uh, financial motive in the outcome of the case. It would be perfectly appropriate, in fact, it would be your duty as an attorney to talk about the credibility and the motives of witnesses. You should do that. There's nothing wrong with that. And you, you should talk about it in the sense that, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, let's think about this from your own personal experiences. If um, it, you heard that the, the individual was going to win a lot of money if, if you ruled in a certain favor, well, then of course, then you should look at their testimony in a certain light because they have a financial motive in the outcome of the case. And, and you would do that in your own personal experiences in your own life. You know, if somebody's telling you something but they have a motive behind it that they're going to receive some benefit because of how you decide, you know, this story, then you can comment on the credibility or the motives of the uh, witness. So you should do that. The other thing is you should tie the evidence uh, to the law. So uh, you want to take the evidence and you want to apply it to the law. So if you have to prove, uh, you know, drunk driving, then you want to take the evidence that shows that the defendant was driving. Here's how we prove that. Boom. Here's how we prove that they were drinking. And here's what their blood alcohol level was. You know, and so you want to take those facts, pull them out of testimony, and apply them to the law. Um, you want to uh, begin to formulate, as you're doing your, um, your closing argument, you want to summarize your case and make conclusions based on the evidence presented. And I, and I need to uh, talk about that. You can't use evidence that does not come from the mock trial. It has to be presented. It can be in the mock trial packet, but if you don't present that in your case, you can't use that. So your case must be based on the evidence that's been presented during the mock trial through the witnesses. Hope you get that. So if you need the witness to say a certain thing in order for it to be in your closing argument, you need to, if you're doing the closing argument role, you need to listen for that witness to testify to that thing. If they don't testify to that or that evidence doesn't come in, don't use that in your closing argument, even though it was part of the mock trial packet. Point out the favorable evidence and discredit the evidence that hurts you. So you want to draw out, you want to point out things that help your case. You want to ask yourself, if I was sitting there as a juror, why would I rule in favor of this party? Why should they prevail? So what would, what would be some reasons for uh, them to rule in your favor? You want to be an advocate. You want to argue and you want to present the case in a certain light that is you're advocating that the jury should believe in uh, your case. You want to be dynamic. You're not just going to get up there and read this. You want to make them believe that you believe in the case. And you want to use your theme. You know, we talked about that. You want to develop your theme. In the O.J. Simpson case, one of the themes they had was if the, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. It's a very famous theme from uh, criminal justice. And the, and the theme was they found a, or the, the background is they found a, a, a glove at O.J. Simpson's house and at the murder scene, and the gloves um, did not match O.J. Simpson, allegedly. So they're saying, if these gloves don't fit his hand, then you, so if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. That was their theme. You need to know your closing argument, but um, don't read it, but be flexible. And what I mean by that is it goes back to this. You can only present evidence that comes out during the trial. So be flexible, be ready 
And we'll talk about this in video two on how to prepare your, your closing argument on how to be flexible. You want to um, point out where the other side failed to deliver. Remember, we're going back to the opening statement. Where did the other side fail to deliver on their opening statement? And you want to bring up, and this is where you're being an advocate. Ladies and gentlemen, you remember the, my, um, where the prosecution said that they were going to do X, Y, and Z? They only did X and Y. Do you remember that? They promised you they were going to give you Z, and they didn't do it. Point that out. Use those exhibits that have been admitted and refer to them as the exhibit number. Use those exhibits that, been, that have been admitted in the case. And you want to read and know the jury instructions. I can tell you all these years of doing mock trial, I really hope that you read the jury instructions that are in the back of the mock trial book because those are where you're going to formulate um, some of the things that you needed to prove and uh, have the testimony in support of that. So this is an overview of closing arguments. Part one, part two, we'll talk about how to do that. Again, be an advocate. Um, make the jury believe in you. Be flexible. Don't read it. And uh, have fun with it. So we'll get into this in uh, part two. Thanks.